focus on me for a minute, please. What we're going to look at today is rectilinear motion, and we are actually looking at rates of change in context now. How are we going to use the rate of change? How are we going to use uh, your, uh, your derivative? Derivative, thinking about how we're going to relate displacement to velocity, distance and speed. What's the difference between displacement and distance and velocity and speed? Alright? Now, so by the end of the lesson, you should link the concept of rate of change to the context of displacement slash distance, velocity slash speed, and time. Alright? You must be able to define the motion in a straight line as rectilinear and use calculus to solve problems involving displacement and the velocity of functions. All right? Now, the most useful application of calculus is in the field of motion because of the rate of change relationship that exists between the concepts such as speed and velocity, distance, displacement, and time. All right? So, let's first dis define rectilinear motion. It is defined as motion in a straight line. Think about it as a one-dimensional mo motion. You are going in a straight line. All right? Note, speed is the change in distance over the change in time. And speed is the rate of change of distance with respect to time. Similarly, velocity is the change in displacement over the change in time. That is velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. Now, before I go on any further, what I would like all of you to do is to actually stand up quickly because I am going to show you a few things. Stand up and have a look at what I've done on the floor here. All right? Here, come. you can gather around. Gather around, come forward closer. Gather around, have a look at what I've done on the floor here. All right? Now, it's going to be hard for me to lesson because I want to demonstrate a few things. Here, on the floor, what I've done is I have labeled starting from 0 meter to 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters, and 4 meters. All right? What I'm going to do is to tell you the difference between distance and displacement by just looking at that. All right? Some of you may know, some of you may not. So if I go from zero meters, if I keep walking, all right, let's say my speed or my velocity is one meter per second. All right, oh, hang on, no, my speed is one meter per second, which means when I go from zero back to one, my speed would be eight meters. Oh, it's still one meters per second, but my total distance is eight meters. Yes. Correct? Zero. But displacement is zero because I've walked in that positive direction and then from here I've moved back correct now think about this situation I start from zero I go to two all right and I go back and I go forward and I go back what is my displacement zero. What's my distance? <laughs> so, one meter, Eight. two meter, I don't know, I don't know, and then I'll go back, three, and then go back, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? So, depends on the time that I've done. So that will be the speed, the average speed will be eight meters divided by the time. Correct? That's the speed. Speed that is no is a scalar um, quantity. It's not a vector quantity. But velocity. I have a velocity going forward. All right. I do have a velocity going backwards as well. All right. So velocity can be positive or negative. So it could be going there. Velocity in one meters per second. Coming back is minus one meters per second. All right. So there's the difference between velocity and speed. All right, go back now. We can actually start going through the next bit of the lesson. All right, 
I hope that really clarifies the difference between displacement and distance because you really need to know that concept well. What's the difference between displacement and, um, and distance? And you need to know the concept of velocity versus uh, speed. All right. Now, distance versus displacement. For distance, is the total of the absolute values of displacement. Only positive value, there's no direction, and it's a scalar quantity. Whereas displacement, it can take on positive or negative values depending on direction. So, when I say that way is a positive direction, that way is positive. So when I move that, I've got displacement of, for example, here is 3 meters. Distance is 3 meters. But when I go back, right here, my displacement would be zero. But the total distance is 3 meters plus the absolute value of the minus 3 meters. So therefore, it's 6 meters that I've traveled on. Traveled. All right? So think about the difference between distance and displacement. Speed versus velocity. Speed is the total absolute value of displacement over time taken. It's only positive values. There is no direction. Again, it's a scalar quantity. Whereas velocity can take on positive or negative values depending on direction. And it's a vector quantities. So we haven't gone up to acceleration yet. Because next year, you'll be thinking about acceleration. I'll touch on a little bit about acceleration. Acceleration will be, you could have a positive velocity, but you could have a negative acceleration. All right? Because you're slowing down. So acceleration could be negative, but you're still traveling in a positive direction. Wait till you come to next year. Not yet. All right. So rectilinear motion using calculus. What we are now thinking of is give the function xt as describing the displacement of a body with respect to time. So you are using the function to describe displacement. Then the velocity vt of the body with respect to time is given by the first derivative of displacement. So dx dt or x dash t is actually velocity, the function of velocity, all right, with respect to time, vt. So you can see that if I differentiate xt, I'll get vt, all right? And if I integrate vt, what do I get? I go back to xt, right? So displacement versus time. What is the slope? Distance over time. That is speed. Distance over time is speed. We're talking about velocity over time now. All right? So you've got to think about it that way. When you are plotting a graph, for example, you've got a <coughs> straight line graph for uh, displacement and um, with respect to time, displacement and time, the gradient function will be the velocity. All right? So rectilinear motion using calculus. Continue on. Similarly, giving the velocity function of a body with respect to time. The displacement of the body is given as the integral or antiderivative of velocity. So you integrate a velocity function with respect to time, that you will get your uh, um, displacement function plus the initial, initial condition C. So for me, just now when I show you, I started from zero. All right? Now, uh, let's. All right. So now, if I start from two meters, think about it, and I go forward and back and keep going until I go outside the door. What would my. Uh, let's say this is minus one meters. Negative. The displacement will be negative 1, but what about the total distance if I start from 2 meters here? So if I start from 2 meters here, I go to 3 meters, that's 1, and go back. 2, 3, 4, 5. So total distance is 5 meters, 
the displacement is minus 1 from 0, correct? Or what is the exact change in the minus displacement? Three. What is the exact change in displacement from 2 minus to minus 1? What's the exact change? Minus exact change. Three. Minus 3 meters. Very good. So you've got to think about how you could use displacement and, uh, and distance. All right. So let's do the summary of the concept. You've got it in front of you. So what I'm going to do is give you a couple of things that you need to write down. So from here, if you've got an expression for velocity given displacement, so it's x t, correct? That's expression. So if expression of displacement, so velocity v t will then be dx dt or x dash t. All right? Now, initial velocity, that is when t equals to 0. So you could have x dash 0 or which is the same as v0. Correct? Do you agree with me? So velocity at t equals to a is x dash a or v a. Now, the speed at t equals a. Speed, what, it, what do you need? Speed, you need to know the total distance. Total distance. So, in fact, in this case, we could actually just state that this is absolute, that will be your speed, all right? And average speed over um, between A and B will be X B minus X A divided by B minus A, all right? So it's average speed. So it's total distance divided by the total time. So expression for displacement given a velocity, V T. So therefore, uh, we integrate Vt with respect to dt, that will give me xt plus c. Again, think about the initial, um, initial uh, condition problem, initial value problem. You need to know c. So initial bleed displacement, x0 will then be equals to c. And displacement at time t equals a is xa. All right, now, this is extension, the distance travel over A and B. So what you need to do is, this will be an integrate, definite integrate between A and B, all right, Vt. You've got a definite integration in that case. Next year you will learn when you have definite Integrate integration why you're not worried about the initial value because it's one take away the other. The constant will be gone. So it's something like this. You are looking at the area under the curve. Let's say the uh, velocity function is v. Alright? This point is a, this point is b. So you are looking at the area under the curve. So you are actually working on using the in definite integral. If not, what you need to do is work out the displacement from A to B, uh, A to where the zero is, and then the displacement from zero to where B is, and then add them together. All right, the absolute value. So you've got to work it out in two, two different ways. I'll show you an example a little bit later. Let's look at example one now. You've got example one in front of you, all right? The displacement in meters of a particle after t seconds is given by that function. So you can see that the displacement with respect to time is a cubic function. So you should be able to state the initial displacement. What is the initial displacement? Init thank you, because when initial displacement is when t equals to zero, correct? So therefore, x zero equals to one. That's the initial displacement. Determine the expression for the velocity of the particle. So Vt will then be t 
t to the power 4 divided by 4 minus 3. Correct? Oh, no, hang on. 3t square. Oh. 3t square. I integrate it instead of O. G. I integrate it so it's 3t square minus 3. All right? Do you agree with me? So determine the time which the displacement is minimum and state is displacement. So part C, minimum, you need to know that 3t squared minus 3 equals to 0. All right? So therefore, 3, t squared minus 1 equals to 0. And t equals to 1 or negative 1. Now, can I have t equals to negative 1? You can't go back in time, all right? So t equals to 0 is the minimum. You cannot have minus 1. So we have to reject t equals to minus 1. Now, let's work out. With uh, t and uh, vt, or d, dx dt. All right, let's see whether it's minimal or, or or maximum. So I started off. I'll do the do my um, sign test. So t equals one, less than one, greater than one. All right. At one is zero. So therefore, you know it's either maximum or minimum. So if it is less than one. So if it is less than one, three times 0.5 square minus three that will be negative. So it's that way. And if it is greater than one. Let's say t is uh, 2, 3 times 4, 12, 12 minus 3, that's positive. All right? So therefore, t equals 1 is when the particle is uh, at a minimum displacement. And therefore, x. 1 equals to 1 cube minus 3 times 1 plus 1, which is 1 minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 1. Uh, did I say meters? Yes, in meters. All right. So the displacement is minus 1 meters. Although the initial initially started with 1, so this situation is when the particle started with 1. All right. It would travel up somewhere and then go back and finish at minus one. All right, so you are looking at a displacement of minus one, the other direction. If you define that as positive, that will be negative. If you define that as negative, that will be positive, all right? Now the next question, Let's try this. The velocity in meters per second of a particle after t seconds is given by that function below. Given that the initial displacement of the particle is 10 meters, so that's the initial displacement, it's 10 meters, determine the expression of the displacement xt. Find the exact change, exact change in displacement over the first 10 seconds of motion. Now, part C is the interesting one. Will the distance travel after 10 seconds be the same as the change in displacement over the first 10 seconds? You need to be able to justify it. Hence, determine the average speed of the particle over the first 10 seconds. Let's start off with A. All right? So, we know that xt is integrating vt with respect to time. So, therefore, we've got 9.8t squared divided by 2 plus 5t plus c. Now we know that c is 10, so therefore xt is then 4.6t squared, not 4.6, I think it's 4.9. Oops. What do you think about 4.6? It's 4.9. 4.9t squared plus 5t plus 10. Do you agree with me? Yeah? Because you need to integrate, and you also need to know, you also, uh, you are given the initial condition as 10 meters. All right? Now, find the exact change in displacement. 
exact change in displacement over the first 10 seconds of motion. What you need to do is find the displacement first. All right? Xt and will be 4.9 times 10 squared plus 5 times 10 plus 10, which is 490 plus uh, 50 plus 10, which is 550 meters. Is that the exact change in this list? No. No, why? Thank you, you got to take away x0 and you know that x0 is 10 so therefore the exact change in displacement equals to 550 minus 10 which is 540 meters Now part C Will the distance travel after 10 seconds be the same as the change in displacement? over the first 10 seconds. It will not because of what? What is the distance travel? Hmm? It's the total. That's good. So how are you going to work that out? Why x20 minus x10? This is the first uh, travel after 10. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, it is. It's x20 minus x10. Work, work after 10 seconds be the same. Yep. Can you can you work that out, please? What is x20? I need my calculator as well with this one. So why are we using Sorry? Why are we using 20? Because the distance travel after 10 seconds be the same as the change in the displacement over the 10 seconds. After 10 seconds. It's the same time, it's the same point. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I misinterpreted it. Yeah, I was thinking about, yeah, that's right. I was thinking about 20. Yeah, sorry. Is the is we are talking about same point? Not talking about yeah. My fault, my fault, my fault. I was thinking, not thinking about the. Uh, I was thinking about ten plus ten, twenty minus ten. That's uh. All right. So you are thinking about the distance after ten, ten seconds. So what would be the distance after ten seconds? You tell me. How would you do a question like this? How would you do a question like this? So now you know, all right? This is an interesting one. Vt equals to 9.8t plus 5. All right? Hang on. Let's write down xt equals to 9, uh, 4.9 plus 5 t squared plus 5t plus 10. All right, can you all grab your class pad out, please? Grab your class pad out. Grab your class pad out. Oops, wrong one. Grab your class pad out, go to... Menu, go to graph and table. Clear everything, please. All right, clear everything. So now, what I want you to plot is 4.9, plot xt. All right, I want you to plot that. Plot it, please. You can't see anything, but if you go to zoom, go in, zoom, go to auto. All right? You can see you've got a curve there. Right? What you really want to think about is the, the distance from here to 
Ah, uh, 10 seconds. So I might need to change the scale. Click OK. All right. So what you want is from 0 until 10. All right. So you want, let's use this. What you want is the distance travel if it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this graph will go all the way up. So up there, up to 10 here. This is the area under the graph you want. That's the distance travel. Alright? That's the area under the graph you want. Distance travel. And what do you do? How do you do that? The definite definite integral. Let's do the definite integral. So if I go to do the definite integral, all right, let's go to do the definite integral, which is under main. Let's go to keyboard, math 2, all right, from 0, 0 to 10. Four. Uh, hang on. You are integrating VT, which is 9.8x plus, not minus, plus 5 dx, and then execute. So the distance travel is 540. The distance travel is 540. Is there? In this case, go back to the graph. If you look at the graph, so isn't the uh, negative 9.8 plus 5? Sorry? Yeah. It's negative 9.8 plus. It's plus 9.8. No, oh, it's plus. It's not negative. I will talk about the negative. It should be plus. It should be plus. So, in this case, there is no change. Because if you go back, have a look. Everyone. If you go, if you look at, oh, it's it's positive. It's nine point eight. It's not minus nine point eight. It's nine point eight. So if I go to uh, the graph and table, if I plot that, you can see that it's traveling only in one direction. Right? There is no change in direction. It's only traveling in one direction. It's all positive. See, the velocity. This is this is the uh, this is the this is the uh, displacement, so the displacement is all in the positive direction. All right? Yeah? So therefore, there's no change, so that's 540. And therefore, this question here is, uh, so if you do an integration, the distance, 0 to 10, uh, 9.8t plus 5 dt, that gives you 540 meters. So therefore, there is no change. All right? And the, therefore, the average speed is actually equals to um, 540 divided by 10, which is 54 meters per second. Now. I know some of you got the sheet with uh, Vt equals to minus 9.8. What I want is all of you to go back to your class back now. So the, the example I gave you is definitely um, positive. But what I want you to do is go to your class back and put in a negative. 4.9. Let's put in a negative and see what happened. Alright? If you put in a negative and plot it, it's upside down and you can see that there's a change in direction. Yeah? You can see that here it's traveling in a positive direction and then it's going back to the negative direction. Alright? Yes. Yes? Got it? Yes. So when you have that situation, you really need to look at the curve under here and the curve under there. Alright? Uh, the area area under here which is that little bit here plus 
up to 10. Let's say this goes down here and that bit there. All right. So you could do an integration from here to here and you will see that there is a difference between the, uh, the displacement and the, um, and the total distance. All right. The displacement here from memory is minus 430. Or 440 or whatever. Yeah. Try that, please. And let me know if I'm right. So you can see that by having a negative in front, there's a change in terms of displacement. The displacement has gone, gone back that way. All right? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop now. And you've got plenty of exercises to do. Tomorrow there will be another session on rectilinear motion. Make sure that you know your rectilinear motion well. Alright?